this wasn't the first time that police had interviewed people in Audrey's life, but the state police hadn't been involved in those initial interviews, so they wanted to re-interview everyone. Captain Carrie Sleeper from the Vermont State Police said, quote, We are hopeful that it's a missing person, but as time goes by, the more concerned we are that something else might have happened. I'm very hopeful for her and her family, and she calls and says she just needed time away. But we also have to prepare for other circumstances. This is what we are doing now. End quote. But Audrey's family never for one minute believed that she could just, like, up and leave because she needed a break. One of her daughters, Tanya, who was 18, told reporters, quote, My mother would never just leave any of my sisters at home alone and not call. My mother had those days where she just gets up and goes, but she tells us she's leaving and she w- will be back. And even if she's just running a little bit late, she will call. End quote. So, 18-year-old Tanya is busy trying to track down her mother, like, on her own, um, like, separate from the police investigation. She called Patrick, who said he had dropped Audrey off at the park and go around 10 p.m. Saturday night and he hadn't seen her since. So everyone is very busy looking for Audrey, but there is like this other problem with Audrey's disappearance. With Audrey gone, there is no one to take care of her children. Tanya stepped in trying to take over for her mom um, and at this point one of the main persons of interest is Jack Jarvis although please haven't said this this is the last person known to be with her so when police first interview him he said that they had gone to the mall for a little while and then they went back to Mount Pillar. he said they traveled to this remote area where he had set up this tent. Um, they drank beer and they were intimate. And then he drove her back to her truck around 9.45 p.m. He said that he stayed there while she got into her truck, like unlocked it and got in. And at that point, he felt like she was safe, and he left and went home. He said he got home between 10 and 10.15, and police would find witnesses to say they had seen Patrick at his home around this time. Like, I think it was somebody who lived in the same apartment complex. However, he didn't stay home. He then took a shower and went out to meet a friend in Burlington, but those plans didn't work out, so he began looking, like, driving around, I guess, looking for a woman to pick up. He didn't find anyone, so he headed out to Lake Champlain, where he fished until sunrise, and then went back to his apartment. According to police, Patrick's version of events from that night were very suspicious. They obtained a warrant and they ended up putting a like wiretap on Patrick's phone. So they began listening to his phone calls. Um, 
this was just an excuse to get her alone. So, police had found out that he had picked this girl up on Sunday, August 22nd, the same day that Audrey was reported missing and had assaulted her again. See, what happened was when police went to his apartment to speak to him about Audrey's disappearance, they found this young girl in his apartment, and this kicked off their investigation. So, he was arrested, and initially, Patrick was super cooperative um, with police. However, as soon as they, like, turned their line of questioning to Audrey, he stopped stopped speaking with them. He obviously stopped cooperating with them. And um, when they brought up, like, possibly taking a polygraph, he lawyered up and wouldn't talk anymore. So on this day that he's being interviewed, um, he didn't change his story, but he will as time goes on. So police began searching near this area where he claimed to have been, um, like the remote area, where he claimed he had been with Audrey, but they didn't find anything. They also searched this, um, lake, Lake Champlain, where he said that he had spent time that morning. Again, they found nothing. Police also went to University Mall, where they showed photos of Audrey and Patrick around, but they couldn't find anyone who had seen Audrey. No store employees, uh, no security, no one. In fact, they realized no one had seen Audrey after she dropped her daughter off at the sleepover. That was like, I mean, obviously, besides Patrick, no one had seen her. Not one person. So, police begin looking into Patrick's past, and they find some interesting information from his police records in South Carolina. In 1990, he pled guilty for lewd and lascivious acts with a minor under the age of 14. When this information came out in the press, those who knew Audrey closest were sure she had no idea about this man's past or she would not have brought him around her children. However, it seems like Audrey was aware um, because she told her daughters they were never allowed to be alone with Patrick Jarvis. She never explained this to them, like she never told them why. On September 2nd, Patrick Jarvis was arraigned and he pled not guilty. His bail was set at $25,000, so he could not make bail, and he stayed in jail to await trial. Audrey's family was super frustrated because they felt like um, the police were keeping them in the dark and that they weren't really doing anything um, when, in fact, the police were. They were just trying to keep it. searched Patrick's apartment as well as Patrick's mother's home. So I guess at the mother's property, um, they had a tip that someone had noticed fresh overturned earth, and they had reported it to the police. So the police wanted to look into it and see if something someone had been buried there. Now, there was this statement that had been given by one of Audrey's daughters, so it was a statement 
statement she had said, but it had been written down by a police officer. And the statement said that on the day after Audrey went missing, she had gone to the supposed campsite that Patrick had set up for himself and Audrey to go to, just to like hang out at. So Patrick takes her there. And this statement reads, in part, quote, Before they left the site, the girls said Jarvis removed a shovel from an adjacent site and put it in the back of his car, end quote. So this statement would lead to um, another police search of the campsite and the surrounding woods looking for any any kind of evidence. So they do this big search for Audrey, but still there was nothing found. In October of that year, a district court judge was forced to reduce charges against Patrick. So he had been charged with aggravated sexual assault based, I guess, in part on his prior conviction in South Carolina. However, this, I guess, can only be implied if the suspect had been charged with um, aggravated sexual assault on a minor. However, in the South Carolina case, Patrick had taken a plea for lewd and lascivious acts on a minor or a child. So they no longer had standing for the aggravated sexual assault. So instead, Patrick was arraigned on sexual assault of a minor under the age of 15. And as a result of this, his bill went from $25,000 to five thousand dollars. In the meantime, police really had nowhere else to go with Audrey's case. No leads were coming in, they had no new evidence, and they're not even really sure which direction to go in. In November, police announced it would be searching the Wrightsville Dam and Reservoir area in Middlesex after receiving a tip that Audrey's body would be found near a large body of water in Middlesex. This is about 10 miles from where um, Patrick claimed he and Audrey went to a tent on the night she went missing. I guess police also found out this was somewhere where he went often, so they figured it was worth searching. Witnesses had told police that they smelled a foul odor coming from the area, so the area was searched with the assistance of canines and cadaver dogs. On Tuesday, December 7th, Patrick agreed to a plea deal and part of this plea deal was he had to take a polygraph. Although, neither Patrick nor, like, the state of Vermont could, um, release details of this polygraph. So, if he passed, no one could say he passed. If he failed, no one could say he failed. Like, nothing about the polygraph could be released. Patrick Jarvis once again pled guilty to lewd and lascivious acts um, with a child, and he got he was sentenced one to five years, um, with three years suspended. So he takes the polygraph, which we know nothing about. In February of nineteen. Carrie and Judy, um, Audrey's parents, hired a private investigator and a lawyer so that her children would be eligible for benefits. Okay, so what had happened was in the wake of Audrey disappearing, um, at first her 18-year-old daughter had um, kind of took over as legal guardian of her younger sisters. And I think they were all hoping this would be very temporary. No one thought Audrey just wouldn't return. 
so they were all split up um, I guess one was like Audrey's mechanic and his wife took one of them in so they all get taken in by friends except one of the daughters who decides she wants to go to New York to live with her dad so because Audrey isn't considered dead yet there are no social security benefits and I guess because they were being taken care of by friends and not a family they were not eligible for any kind of state assistance either so these poor girls are left with really nothing I mean it's lucky that friends stepped in to take them but their lives have just been shattered I guess at the time someone had to be missing for seven years before they could legally be declared dead so this left the girls ineligible for benefits so the lawyer and PI are hired um, to investigate hoping they can find something that would either be able to declare her dead or I don't know maybe like a loophole in um, the rules but they wanted these girls to be eligible for benefits to try and help care for the girls in July a man was fishing in Marshfield Pond which is about 30 miles um, from Northfield when he discovers this huge chunk of human hair now police said they found nothing to connect this hair to Audrey but I guess this guy who found the hair um, had called police um, because at this point Audrey's disappearance was widely known and he said he was like kind of disappointed because the police hadn't really looked into it as much as he thought they should or they should have so he began dragging the pond himself he was sure there was something in there to find police did end up coming back to this pond and doing a big search but they found absolutely nothing to link Audrey to this location police would then come out and say that they do not believe that Audrey has ever been taken to University Mall or had ever been taken to University Mall on the day she disappeared and they also believe that she was never dropped back off at her truck at the park and ride they think Audrey um, had maybe become aware of Patrick's assault against the child who was uh, cleaning his apartment or his house and that she had confronted him and he reacted and um, he basically made her disappear he killed her and hid the body is what kind of the theory is turning to police would also say that they have several suspects like several possible suspects but that Patrick Jarvis has never been cleared they said if they had enough evidence to arrest Jarvis they would but they just don't have enough at this point by the time 1994 had come to a close, Audrey's case had grown ice cold. There was just no progress being made at all. What made it worse was that in December of that year, Patrick Jarvis was released from prison after serving only 15 months. So that was all he got. In 1995, this newspaper did an in-depth story on Audrey's case and in it, it came out that in August, when Audrey had first gone missing, Patrick had been interviewed and his statements had not been consistent and they had changed with each subsequent interview. He had 
was his route from the mall to Wendy's. He couldn't remember. Then he said they went to the Montpelier area where they stopped at a grocery store to buy beer and cigarettes. They then went to Middlesex where he had set up this tent. Now according to him, they drank six beers each. They then went into the tent and were intimate with each other. And then he took her back to the park and ride and dropped her off at her truck. He said he waited for her to start the engine and then he drove off. When questioned another time, he said he returned to the park and ride like 30 minutes after he had dropped her off and she was still there inside her truck. The third interview, he told police that he like stopped. So he goes back and he offers to drop her off at home. But she declined. The next thing that he said was that she might have had to call someone to get a ride. So police are like, wait a minute, our truck started just fine, according to you. Why would she need a ride? And Patrick couldn't answer this question. Um, one of Audrey's daughters had asked Patrick outright, like, where is my mom? And he said she must have walked to a telephone to call some guy and then just disappeared into thin air. Like that was a quote from him. Now remember, he said he um, had left Audrey and then he went to look for other women and then drove to the lake and fished until the sun came up and then drove the 60 miles home the next morning. However, police say they do not believe Audrey had ever been at the mall or to Wendy's. And I guess while they had done this search of his home, they found a receipt from Wendy's and it was dated the day Audrey went missing. But there was no timestamp, so they think he may have like gone there earlier trying to set up an alibi. Those who knew Audrey knew she really wasn't a big drinker. So the idea of her drinking six beers in a very short period of time seemed very unlikely. In September of 1995, a judge ordered Audrey to be declared legally dead. Um, so they get a death certificate and it's stated that Audrey was presumed dead on August 21st, 1993, which is the same day she went missing. In 1997, their daughters held this like celebration of life in honor of their mother. They had a headstone placed in the cemetery that listed her birth and death dates, and it said, quote, loved and missed. One daughter commented that after all the time that had gone by, she had hoped the police would have solved the case, but after everything, they still had nothing. Years later, a major search was held on October 19th, 2001, and the Wrightsville Dam was ordered to be um, drained or like drawn down. I guess they can draw down the water. So this is a process and it took a while. But in November, they were able to search. Um, so a search was held. They used cadaver. 
sure to 